Hello, my name is Cheku and I'm working as a 3D designer in the CLO team. It's great pleasure meeting with you. Before I joined CLO, I worked as a technical designer and pattern maker at a garment company. Based on this background, here I am mainly researching the 2D features and virtual fitting of CLO. The reason why I participated in the virtual user summit is because Currently, there is a perception that Clue is still insufficient and weak to replace other CAD when making patterns. So through this opportunity, I want to show you that you can make patterns without difficulty even with Clue. Of course, there are many 2D features that still need to be improved, but if you use the 2D feature when making patterns and share your feedback, it would be very helpful in developing 2D features so that you can create patterns more intuitively and practically. So from now on, I'm gonna show you the process of making patterns with Clove. While watching this process, I want you to know what the biggest advantages of making patterns with Clove. I'm also gonna print out the pattern that I made in Clo and make an actual sample. So let's compare the difference between the 3D sample made in Clo and the actual sample. I'm gonna make a pattern based on this sketch and specifications. We don't have much time and it would be quite long if I explain every tool from start to end. So I will go fast and explain briefly. I think it will be enough for you to just know that how to make pattern in CLO and its advantages. For detailed pattern making method, you can find out our pattern making tutorial on YouTube, which title is Pattern Making in CLO. In CLO, when you start to create a pattern, you can develop from this square surface as the waist. And then we can draw the waist and hip position and body length lines by using the offset internal line tool. Then use the add point tool to mark where to be the width of each spec. And then draw the outer line of the skirt with the internal polygon line tool. Once you have the outer line like this, Use the curve tool to draw a beautiful waist and hip line. And then trace the front and back body in a pattern. I'm using a lot of shortcut to speed things up, so if you are curious about what tool I used, you can watch the YouTube video I mentioned earlier then you can find the detailed description and uses of tools. If you have any other questions for now, please write them in the chat window and I will answer. Now I trace the basic pattern of the skirt like this and I will add darts at waistline. You can create dart from a point added on the outer line of the pattern like this. Once you made a dart based on the spec, a preview line appears which is when dart is closed, so you can modify the preview line for natural curve. After darts are done, you can use the matchup tool to attach the side seams of the front and back panels and check whether the curve is natural or not, and then make correction. The half skirt pattern has been done, so I duplicate patterns to be symmetric with the sewing, and then I put on dummy. After putting on it, use the avatar tape tool to draw a line according to the waist position spec away from the landmark. In this stage, we can check the balance of the garment in advance by attaching the garments to the lines. Now I'm gonna make a facing that goes inside the waist. For the facing, draw a line according to the facing width using the offset internal line. And if there is a dart at the waistline, you can trace the facing separately with the trace tool. Once you trace the each facing, you can merge the trace patterns and then unfold the center of facing to complete. And then I'm sewing the complete facings directly and then place under the garments like this. Now I go to the bottom. To make a ruffle pattern, make a square pattern. 
and then use fullest line tool to create a ruffle by spreading as much as you want. In this stage, you can also visually check the amount of ruffle here. If the desired amount does not come out, you can correct it right away until you get the desired amount of ruffle. Finally, I will make a frill patterns. First of all, use the 3D pen and draw a rough guideline for the part where the frill is inserted. Based on the drawn guideline, create smooth and natural curve line with the internal polygon line tool. Once you have the desired frill line, you cut this internal line. In the case of a frill like this as on the sketch, it's difficult to make a lot of ruffles with a normal curve, so you have to give severe curve like a snake whipping around. The feature that you can make like that is the spider tool. When creating, you can change the curvature by entering the offset and radius value in the option window. You can also create a desired spider pattern by adjusting the width of the pattern. I made a frill for the front panel and also check the length of the cut line seam of back panel for the frill to be the same length. I finished making the frill pattern and will sew it and simulate it. In order to see the amount of frills more accurately, lower the particle distance to 5. And check the amount of frills if it's good, then finish sewing the frills. Now sewing is complete, I will check to see if there are any problems with the overall outfit. If you look at the frill at the waist, it's pulling that creating drag lines. I think it's because the length of the frill seems to be too short. So I will improve it by increasing the outer length of the frill pattern. Now the drag lines looks improved by correcting the pattern right away. The frill on the bottom is also pulled towards the back as the same reason of the frill at waist. This part, I will also increase the outline length of the frill pattern to improve it. Let's check the other parts if there is other issues. If you look at the side seam, it's not a straight line, but it's curved towards the hip. Then let's check the pattern to see what happens. If you look at the avatar, the hip sticks out, but if you look at the pattern, center back line is too straight. I think the pattern has a small amount of hips, so I will increase it a little from center back of the hip line. After increasing like this, the hip line is angled, so I use the curve tool to become a natural curve. Let's do the simulation and pull the garment to be correct position. Now then let's apply the fabric to the garment. Actually, I should have applied the fabric first and checked the fit later, but the other has been reversed. Sorry for confusing. So when you fit check, apply the fabric first and then check the fit. I will apply the knit fabric provided by Connect. There are many free assets in Connect, so please take a look around. I download a free fabric provided by Swatchion and apply it to my garment now and then apply high-res garment and simulate it. 
I stop simulating and finally apply stitches to the garment. The frill has quarter turn back and the ruffle hem has half inch turn back. So apply stitches according to the width of each turn back. Then select the high quality render from the toggle menu in the 3D window to review the overall if any other issues on the garment. If it looks okay, then I will apply the seam allowance to the pattern. First, select the seam allowance tool and drag the entire pattern then it's applied right away. You can also change the seam allowance with us according to the construction. There are several options when applying the seam allowance of each pattern edge. So you can just choose and use it. In the case of darts, if you click the dart point, the dart seam allowance options appears. So you can simply select it and apply it. And for the center back of the waist, there are cases where the seam allowance is a little wider to give extra fabric. You can blend the seam allowance with us naturally by adjusting with us for each line in this way. And for the notch, you can simply add by clicking after selecting the notch tool. And for the annotation, you can use the annotation tool to mark on the pattern as a sewing guide. When all the work for the pattern output is finished, go to the print layout mode and select the next pattern, which feature automatically arranges patterns efficiently. Now the pattern was placed on the fabric like this, and I will print out these patterns with a plotter to make a sample to see how similar it will be to the 3D sample. I made an actual sample and put it on the same dummy for both 3D and actual sample. The color of the fabric I applied earlier was not currently in stock so I made a sample in different color. But the same fabric color and texture were applied to the 3D and the same physical properties were also used. As you can see, the garment above is the actual sample and the below is the 3D sample made with cloth. Both garments use the same pattern and the same fabric. How do you see them? From my point of view, the overall balance and the amount of frill seems to be the similar, except for the amount of ruffles at the bottom of the front. But the amount of ruffles on the side and back seems to be the same. When comparing the actual and the 3D sample, it cannot be said that they are 100% identical but we can see that the overall fit balance can be checked to some extent. As I showed you earlier while making the pattern, you can check the side seam curving and drag lines and pling issues before making the actual sample. We are able to prevent fit issues in advance in actual sample. In addition to the advantage of being able to check the fit balance when making patterns in Clo, let me show you another case. In the case of woven shirts or t-shirts that have darts, there is a difference in the balance of the garment depending on the length and depth of the dart. It's very difficult to predict how the garment will turn out until you make the physical garment. In Clo, you can check the balance of the garment by making darts or modifying the length and width of dart in this way first. Let me show you one more last case is that depending on the grain line, the silhouette of the garment changes a lot. But in Clo, it's possible to check how the silhouette of the garment changes depending on the grain line. By changing the grain line differently, you can more easily determine which shape to choose throughout 3D. Thank you for watching so far and we hope you will be interested in 2D features that will be updated in the future and waiting for your feedback. Please check out the other design workshop and gain some new knowledge. Thank you. Bye-bye.